What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all looking forward to the weekend, for it is Friday, March 22. A warm welcome back to Foxy Games UK. Perhaps some of you know who I am by now. For those new to the channel, welcome. I am Fox. Hopefully, you'll find me your reliable source of aggregated video game news, speculation, and rampant rumour. So in today's video, okay, so we're closing in on the end of March pretty fast, and I think it's probably time we looked at PS5 specs without those rose-tinted glasses on. Now the final spec has already been decided and Sony will be talking about the future of PlayStation fairly soon, although I do not yet have full autonomy in how I can relay what I know about PlayStation 5's hardware, including the new DualShock design and the actual form factor of the hardware. It is indeed a beautifully sleek and well-designed piece of kit. I've been told I can at least fill in the blanks and debunk a few things in the process. And for those concerned, I am assured PlayStation 5 is going to be far quieter than PS4 Pro, as PS5 utilizes a refined cooling system compared to the older PlayStation models of the last and current generation. Pretty decent start to the proceedings then. However, since there's so much information out there, a lot of it less valuable than domestic trash, there's also some truth and some telling hints that I am able to offer some insight and highlight, especially since the information is already out there in the form of alleged quote unquote leaks. So let's get stuck in then. First, let's talk about what you can realistically, and the keyword is realistically, expect in terms of PS5's overall power. Apparently, PlayStation 5's GPU power is able to surpass that of a Vega 56 GPU and on par with the more capable Vega 64 and NVIDIA GTX 2070 parts, respectively. Add to that a more than sufficient 16GB of fast high bandwidth GDDR6 RAM and the reported Zen 2 CPU running at an impressive 3.3 gigahertz, a sizable upgrade over the mid-gen PS4 Pro. So yeah, things are looking good, a promising glance of the future PlayStation hardware then, but what are the new details that have emerged regarding Sony's next generation PlayStation 4 successor, the PS5, various spec sheets, product features and even target renders of PS5's form factor have materialized online. Obviously a lot of the leaks are based purely on speculation and the AMD roadmap. However, as you know, there's no smoke without fire, and it turns out some of the information out there matches up with what I've been told from back in early to mid-2018. According to the most realistic of leaks, the PlayStation 5 will feature a 7 nanometer Zen 2 CPU with 8 cores and 16 threads, that much you know, and the processor will run at a 3.2-3.3 GHz boost clock, which is considerably faster than the current Jaguar chip, and a significant leap over mid-gen upgrades PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. Now, the GPU will be based on AMD's next-generation Navi architecture capable of delivering around 12 teraflops of compute power, though I am informed in order to keep the price of the hardware at a mass-market consumer level. Sony are rumored to opt for around 11 plus teraflops of raw compute performance. Furthermore, that is the rumor of the 24 gigabyte of memory in total, of which 20 gigabyte GDDR6 is clocked at 880 gigabits per second, and 4 gigabyte of DDDR4 slower RAM is reserved for the operating system, but I have already made a video expressing my skepticism regarding that. Expect 16 gigabyte GDDR6 RAM with around 480 plus gigabits per second memory bandwidth. Now, there may very very well be a part of that 16 gigabyte of RAM partitioned off or put aside for specifically the UI and background operations or much like PS4 Pro the slower DDDR4 RAM will be used but certainly not from a pool of 24 gigabytes of total RAM and certainly not clocked at 880 gigabits per second like I've said many times before I don't believe everything that is mentioned out there and for obvious reason certainly the 8 core 16 thread Zen 2 CPU indeed makes sense and matches up more more or less of what I've learned. Now, sure, this does indeed make sense that the boost clock of 3.2 gigahertz also doesn't sound like it's out of the realms of possibility, especially when you consider the performance of the new seven nanometer Epic server chip. But when it comes to the graphic side of things, the GPU with up to 14.2 T-flops of uh, rumored powers literally on NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti scale, which is insane and not really happening in a console form factor. That is to say, Navi would come up with a GPU offering that kind of performance. I don't believe we are getting that in a console that they are saying is going to cost around $399 or more. Now, of course, a little hindsight and healthy bit of speculation may tell us that it's part of a development kit and they are using a higher-end Navi GPU to power it. 
we are really not going to get that in a retail unit more realistically around a 2070 level of performance and of course not delivering anything like 14 plus t-flops of compute power one particular leaker the discerning gaming community is paying rather close attention to and this leaker has a posed history of leaking the wii u specs that being said much of what has been relayed sounds a little dubious to say the least there is absolutely no way the PlayStation 5 GPU is going to be equivalent to a 2080 Ti for $500. PlayStation 5 is expected to launch sometime towards the middle of or late next year 2020. Development kits have been available to a select few studios working hard on the next wave of PlayStation greatness and the wider community, the wider development community mostly have the development kits by now. But here's the thing. Navi 20 is said to be the high-end GPU part for the PC market expected late next year and will likely be in the RTX 2080 Ti ballpark. Many speculators, including PGR, do not believe Navi 20 would fit into the sleeker living room friendly design console box, though so even then, a GPU part of this capability really requires the space and cooling system reserved for desktop PCs purpose-built casing only that can provide, particularly due to the power-hungry and expensive nature of this specific part. The many leaks, reports, speculation inside and out of industry pundits are quite frankly anyone with a modicum of common sense points to a Navi 10 based part which is not going to be anywhere near as fast as the much lauded RTX 2080 Ti and that's in spite of whatever bespoke additions or tinkering Sony has AMD doing behind the scenes. It's probably best the hopeful simmer down, rein in and temper their PS5 expectations. As reported on this channel well over a year ago I specifically was told by those in the know about PS5's GPU power and this is more or less likely to fall into the Vega 56 at the very least, Vega 64 or even the RTX 2060, 2070 range and the latter is probably the absolute best case scenario given the consumer friendly price point Sony will want to launch their next gen PlayStation 5. With the recent announcement slash reveal of the Google Stadia virtual console platform and all streaming based subscription service that boasts it can deliver 4K 60 frames per second second performance no less and in the future up to 8k and 120 frames per second and will initially go live offering 10 t-flops of power that's more powerful than the ps4 pro and xbox one x combined and sony must have been watching this with eagle eyes i can categorically confirm here and now ps5 is going to outperform google stadia at 10 t-flops at least in the short term after all ps5 will not enjoy the scalability of a server powered virtual platform particularly one that can add on multiple GPUs thus increasing the power therefore expect a PS5 Pro upgrade halfway through the PS5 life cycle. Google Stadia is a genuine threat in how we consume our games either physically or digitally and in terms of ownership as opposed to no ownership at all with game streaming services but in the short term Stadia is more of a threat to Microsoft's xCloud initiative. During the recent GDC conference Google had shown clear and present intent that they are pursuing the same 2 billion global player base Xbox is chasing and it'll be interesting to see what Microsoft can deliver at this year's E3. Though Microsoft appears to be using their smarts for the next round since they seem to be very cozy with Nintendo. Cuphead with Xbox Live integration lands on Switch this April with more Xbox centric titles to come. Nintendo even referred to Microsoft as, I quote, our friends during the company's recent Nindy showcase. So are Team X and the Big N forming the most unlikely alliance in order to mitigate the forces that will be present in the next gen or in the very near future stronger together and just where does this leave sony playstation well there are rumors out there that sony may be teaming up with amazon using its server technology to bolster strengthen its own game streaming platform playstation now What's this space as I'm in no doubt there will be more to be revealed in time to come as to whether or not Amazon slash Sony Alliance is really a thing. And just before we go we've seen at least two of these Sony backward compatibility patents already but another has gone public providing a little more meat to the bone. So Sony Interactive Entertainment has yet another backwards compatible patent just go live well just today or yesterday depending on your time zone. A filing from 2017 has now gone public and the creator is none other than 
Mr. Mark Cerny yet again. Now the patent loosely details the disabling of a legacy CPU for a new CPU with selected features of the new CPU that are not present on the legacy CPU. So a new device executing an application on a new CPU determines whether the application is for a legacy device having a leg legacy CPU. When the application is for the legacy device, the new CPU executes the application with the selected features of that new CPU, of course, and with the latency of instruction, execution of the new CPUs altered to match or approximate a latency of the legacy CPU, or with the algorithmic details of operations of one or more units of the CPU altered to match an approximate algorithmic detail of the operation of the corresponding unit of the legacy CPU. Yes, a mouthful, I know, and I can't make head nor tails of it. Well, not all of it. Pretty much confirms, though, that PS4 games will run on PS5. Though hopefully this also includes other legacy hardware and software, PlayStation 1 to PS3, anybody. What say you? Do share your thoughts and opinions on today's news because that unfortunately brings us to the end of another video, but let's continue the discussion in the comments. And for all your current and next-gen news updates, rumor and rampant speculation, go ahead, hit the like button, spread the word and keep it locked to Foxy Games UK. Remember, all relevant links where applicable can be found in this video's description. Subscribe to Foxy Games UK. Remember to hit the notification bell so you never miss our content. Thumbs up if you like it here and help us reach more like-minded gamers simply by sharing this video. Consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon and or grab yourself a Foxy Games UK branded t-shirt or hoodie available in various colors and designs. You'll find both links in this video's description i truly appreciate the support and lest we forget the gamer couch podcast each and every sunday live from 5 p.m et and 10 p.m uk moderated by cat aka bullet hell honey this coming sunday don't miss it and that now concludes our time together on this friday i sincerely hope you all have a fantastic weekend it was sincerely great hanging out until the next video remember play games not corporations.